Man Up, brought to you by Construction Professionals, a program dedicated to inspiring and helping men live lives of heroic virtue. Join Joe Stopulis and Father Zach Kowski every Monday at 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. on Iowa Catholic Radio. And now, it's time to man up. Another year goes by, more leaves, more smoke. Welcome to Man Up on Iowa Catholic Radio. We are broadcasting from the Mercy Live Up Studios. Heard on 1150 AM, 88.5 FM, and 94.5 FM. Around the globe, streaming online at iowacatholicradio.com and on the Iowa Catholic Radio app. Also, please like us on Facebook and subscribe to our podcast on iTunes. I am Joe Stopulis, along with Father Zakowski. Today, we are joined by Father Larry Richards. And the topic for today's show is Be a Man. Father Zach, would you please open us up in a word of prayer? Absolutely. In the name of the Father, Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we ask you to send your blessing upon us that we would be your disciples today, that we would be your hands and feet to all those that we encounter. Pray especially for those who are preparing for first reconciliation, for those who have been away from the sacrament, and for our priests who uh, generously give of their time to act in the person of Christ to forgive sins. So we ask you to um, bless us this day and help us to listen to your Holy Spirit as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, grace the, the Lord, Lord is with thee. thee. Blessed, blessed art thou amongst women, women. Blessed and blessed is the, the fruit of thy womb, womb Jesus. Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother, Mother of God, God pray, pray for, for us sinners, sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady, Seat of Wisdom, pray, pray for, for us. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Well, Father, uh, Father Larry Richards. Is on with big us time. Today. He is uh, one of my all-time favorite men speakers, and mm-hmm. I, I mean, I, I've mentioned this before, but he's when we had the show, we, we kind of thought of a guest list, and that he was in the, one of the top people right. to have on because to me, he speaks the language of men. Uh, he does not sugarcoat much. He is very direct and to very the point. straightforward. Um, but he's he's very ge- he can be very gentle in doing that. I mean, mm-hmm. he tells it like it is, and then he does it in a way that makes you laugh and then be serious about uh, about your faith. So. I am thrilled to have Father Larry here. I listened to him a handful of times, but at the 2014 Christ Our Life Conference here in Des Moines, I mm-hmm. uh, got to listen to him uh, be a keynote, and then I actually got to interview him a little bit for the radio that day. And I mean, he's just, he, he is the best. So for those of you who don't know him very much, uh, he is, he's from, he's in, from Pennsylvania, um, and he is currently a priest in Erie, Pennsylvania, and he's a very, very sought-after speaker. He does 45 engagements per year, 45 a year. Um, and he's always back on Sunday at his parish. So he travels a lot. I remember when he was at the Christ Our Life Conference, it was a Saturday, and I said, oh, you hang around for Sunday? He goes, nope, got to fly back. Got to be back in time for uh, Sunday Mass because I, I got to be there for my people. And at the Adoration Chapel, it has a little sign saying where Father Larry Richards is and pray for the people he's listening, he's talking to. So he is obviously very sought after, especially when it comes to men's conferences and men's issues. Uh, so we are uh, thrilled to have him uh, join us today uh, for a conversation on Be a Man, but specifically we're going to talk about confession. Uh, so stick around. We're going to head to a short break. And when we come back, Father Larry Richards will be with us. Thank you, construction professionals, for underwriting our show, Man Up. Construction professionals have been long supporters of Iowa Catholic Radio, and we've seen their work firsthand. It's very impressive. They do remodeling or new construction that is innovative, functional, and designing what you want. cpcustomhomes.com. Welcome back to Man Up on Iowa Catholic Radio. We are broadcasting from the Mercy Live Up Studios, heard on 1150 AM, 88.5 FM, and 94.5 FM. I am Joe Stopulis, along with Father Zach Kautsky. Today we are joined by the great Father Larry Richards. Father Larry is one of the most sought-after Catholic men speakers in the country today. He actually told me to say that. And uh, he, he speaks on a variety of topics that relate to Catholic men living in the world today. His Lighthouse Media talk on the Sacrament of Confession has become the number one talk in North America on that subject. He hosts a call-in show, Open Line, on EWTN Radio on Thursdays at uh, 2 p.m. Central. He's also a keynote speaker at the 2014 Christ Our Life Conference here in Des Moines, Iowa. He's a pastor in Erie, Pennsylvania, and is joining us today to, join, to discuss the topic of his first book, Be a Man. Father Larry, welcome to the show. 
Why, thank you. It's so good to be back on the airwaves in the middle of Iowa. Uh, I, I remember one of the last times you were on the airwaves with us. I, one of my first jobs ever interviewing anyone was you oh. at the Iowa Catholic, uh, at the Iowa Christ Our Life Conference. So that was, oh, I think you said it was the highlight of your, of your entire uh, priesthood. It was every wow. time. When, the last time I was there in uh, Des Moines, it was when the Holy Father John Paul II was there. So you were here for that. I, of course, I was here for that. That was uh, twenty-five years ago. No, even more farther than that because that was Denver. It was, 79. It was seventy-nine. Yeah, seventy-nine. Yeah. Holy cow! You weren't even born yet, were you? It's Thirty. Uh- yeah, I was not. Was, yeah, I wasn't. No. Not quite. Not quite. But shut up. Really. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> next subject. Uh, well, no. So, Father Larry, uh, when we so our radio show has been on the air for about two years now, and we kind of uh-huh. set when we had the show, it's it's dedicated to helping men uh, live the Catholic life. And okay. when I thought when we made our first guest list, you were on it. Uh, not surprisingly, when I think of someone who talks directly uh, to men about where they're at, it was you. So we're excited to have you on today. And quite frankly, one of the, you know, uh, there's a lot of topics in your book. Be a man, and I want I'm going to mm-hmm. encourage that throughout uh, throughout the the show today is to to get people to read that book, to buy that book, and, and and listen to your talks. But I think more so than anything, uh, you are one of the the foremost experts or at least preachers on the uh, topic of confession, and we wanted mm-hmm. you on today to talk about that. So Great. we're going to get right into it because I know you're uh, you love getting guys pumped up to go to confession. So got it. First and foremost, Father Larry, why don't I go directly to God? Why do I need to go to a priest? Because Jesus said, you know, first of all, he says, uh, those who sins you forgive, they are forgiven them. And then it says in James, it says, confess your sins one to another that you may find healing. Because every single sin we do hurts the whole body of Christ. It's not just hurting Christ. So, again, like if you stole, if you, like, or, like, let's say you beat up your brother, and then you go to Jesus and say, Jesus, I'm sorry I beat up my brother. And Jesus would say, excuse me, you hurt your brother. I want you to go tell him your sorry too. Oh, I don't want to do that. And that's what people do because most of our sins, well, every single sin affects the whole body. So if we go to Jesus and say, Jesus, I'm sorry. He says, I love you and I forgive you. But now you've got to ask all your millions and millions of brothers in my body and sisters to ask them for their forgiveness. I can't do that, Jesus. I know that's why I gave you a priest who represents me and the whole body. So can you walk us through the sacrament? I'm assuming we have listeners out there who have not been to confession. Can you walk Uh, us through what it would look like? It is the most wonderful thing in the world because in the sacrament of confession, you encounter Jesus through the priest. And what God does in any sacrament is he makes real what's happening spiritually. So most people feel if anyone, they, they go around with these masks on and they think if anyone really saw me, they would not be able to love me. If anybody ever saw my sins, those things I hate most about myself, the things I'm most embarrassed of, they couldn't love me. And so when you go to confession, the first thing you do is you go, you go in here and you say, how long it's been, or if it's your first time, it's how long since my last confession, and these are my sins. And then you share with the priest, you tell the priest your sins, and you have to give them not only your sins, but you know how many times you've done it, if it's mortal, give, and you don't have to go in and say, oh, Father, I, I swore, uh, I think it was 162 <laughs> times people try to do, it drives me crazy. I say, you could say you swear every day, or you swear a lot, or you swear once, you know, so you've got to give some sense so the priest can help you with, with that. And then you, you just get rid of your get rid of your soul i get rid of your sins and then the priest will usually talk to you about it, and then he gives you absolution and he'll give you a penance well penance first and then absolution and like i've been ordained by god's will this april will be 28 years and i've only given one penance in 28 years it's always the lord's prayer and uh, people will say, oh, Father, I don't think that's enough. And I say, nobody asked you. It's the perfect <laughs> prayer of Jesus. If you sit there and you ask, you know, if you think, if I give you 10 Our Fathers and 10 Our Marys, what are you going to do? Our Father, art in heaven, I'll be on the making. Our Father, art in heaven, I'll be on Our Father, art in heaven, I'll be Our Father, I do that, I better do another one just in case. Our Father, art in heaven. <laughs> and I go, oh, I think God's in heaven. So I'm, shut up. Give me one and mean it. And then I tell them, if you don't think one's enough, you go talk to Jesus and say, you know that perfect prayer you gave us, Jesus? One isn't enough. I have to say 10. Anyway, Whatever it is, you really can't imp- you can't improve upon the perfect the perfect, perfect prayer. prayer. Yeah, exactly. That's why I say just say it from your heart. But anyway, but then as you're given absolution, you have to say you're sorry with the act of contrition, or you say you're sorry, or in your own words. Then when the priest gives you absolution, you are like I tell people, you are a saint. 
you know, you, you're, all your sins have been taken away. You walk out of there free. And the greatest thing about it is, here you share with another human being and says, this is what I hate most about myself. And the other human being can look at you and say, you are loved and you are forgiven. Now, that is the most freeing thing in the world. And a lot of people have never had a great experience because they've – one of two things. When I was young, like when I was young, I went to a priest and he screamed at me. I mean screamed at me. And I thought, oh, my gosh. So it was petrified. It took me forever to get back to confession because someone – when I shared with them as a teenager my sins and the priest screams at me, who I already hated myself to begin with, and then this priest made it even worse, that I walked out and I thought, is this what it is? to encounter Jesus. And it isn't what it is, what it is to encounter Jesus. And Pope Francis says it again and again. He tells us priests, the confessional is not a torture chamber. You know, It's the place where you are most loved, and it's the place where Jesus takes what he did on the cross and covers you with his precious blood so that you can be redeemed and forgiven. You know, like we just had Advent here, you know, as most places do, we have our Advent service. And I give the shortest Advent. My Advent uh, penance service is only, uh, this year it was four minutes long. And people go, what the heck? I do the gospel, and it's Matthew's gospel, and I just say the one thing, and it says, and you will name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. And I say the whole reason Jesus Christ was born was to forgive you your sins. You have nothing to be afraid of. You come, you confess, and the Lord's going to forgive you if you have a repentant heart. And that's the greatness of this great sacrament. You know, so again, people have been afraid, they've had bad experiences, or they're thinking, I ain't going to tell Father that, he'll think I'm really messed up. Uh, We already know you're messed up. So are we. That's why we go to confession, too. I go to confession every two weeks to a month, and it takes me 20 minutes, and I'm still a virgin. But it takes a heck of a lot to confess, because that I have much more i got to grow in, and the Lord is always so merciful. So... Don't be afraid. If you haven't been to confession in a while, come to confession. Jesus is waiting for you, and he longs to forgive you. Don't wimp out. You know, a lot of people will say to me, uh, Father, I mean, you would need all day if I was going to go. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm sure. And, uh, and I always say, well, yeah, I probably would, but I've got all day. If you need it. But, <laughs> yeah. No, I, I do think that that is a fear that people have. They share with me and maybe you is. Sure. I work, you know, I work in a school, and I think one of the fears of the students is, well, if I gosh, Father's going to think less of me, or he's going to sure. he's going to think all about my sins when he's talking to me or he sees me, and I don't, sure. I don't want to see him. Well, and even as a parishioner. So, I mean, a parishioner, yeah, parishioner. to their parish priest or whomever. Of course. Or, yeah. I taught all boys for eight years, and in teaching those boys, I have what we developed I called the questions, and I just went through the – and 99.99999% would go with the questions, where I'd sit there and just ask them about their sins. And most of them – and I still do this at men's conferences – most people never make a good confession because they're petrified to confess some of these sins. And so if you ask them, I, you know, they, have, they know ahead of time I'm going to do this, and they can say they don't want it, but no one ever does. And I'll just – I'll go through the commandments. If you prayed every day. Use God's name in vain. We go through each one, each commandment, because a lot of people have never prepared themselves to make a good confession. And then we go to high school kids. They usually purposely hold something back because they don't want Father to know this about them. But if you ask them, and they like with the questions, they always say, Father, it was the first time I ever made a good confession. I know. You're fine. God loves you. You're forgiven. You have to repent of those things now. But that's been one thing that's helped me, you know, and throughout the years. You know, when I do a parish mission, which I do about the eight a year, the average since the last confession, what I do is 35 years. That's the average when I'm hearing confessions. And it's just unbelievable. And I say, what's kept me away for 35 years? And it's usually fear. Sometimes with men, it's pride. You know, but both of those are the same coin. You know, so... The most say, wonderful sacrament ever. When you say the questions, uh, can you get a little more specific on that? Is there something sure. I could do? Sure. I go with? through the commandments. Now, okay. so what I do is I have what we call the questions. So they come in, so I'll say, so, and I just, uh, these are the exact questions I ask. I'll say, are you married or single? Because there's two different sets of questions. And then they have to give me an idea about how many times they do it. So I'll say, have you prayed every day? Yes or no? You know, okay. explain. Yes or no? Have you used God's holy name in vain? Have you missed mass? Have you dishonored your parents? Have you got angry? Have you hurt others with your words? Have you made fun of others? Have you, if you're a woman, have you had an abortion? 
If you're not, or, or had helped someone else have an abortion, if you're a man, have you helped someone have an abortion? Have you had impure thoughts? Have you had impure actions with yourself? If you're not married, I'll say, have you had oral sex with another? Have you had intercourse with another? If you're married, I'll say, have you used artificial birth control? Have you used... Um, uh, have you committed adultery? Have you had sex with some of the same sex? Have you looked at pornography? Have you lied? Have you cheated? Have you stolen? Have you gossiped? Have you been jealous? Have you got drunk? Have you got high? Have you been judgmental? Have you been proud? And then the greatest of all sins, according to Matthew 25, are the sins of omission. Do you consistently take care of the poor? Is there anything else? And that's when they fill in the blank that, yeah, I don't like cats, and I set one on fire to watch it burn once. <laughs> You're going to hell forever, and there's going to be cats there going, raw, raw. anyway. So that's where you fill in the blank, and that's where we that, – then I would talk to them. So, you know, in doing that, it finally opens them up to finally confess these sins that they have held in there, uh, petrified to bring for years and it finally gets them free. And then we can talk about things if they need to. And usually they're just so, the first time ever, Father, I finally made a good confession. Good. You're listening to Man Up on Iowa Catholic Radio. Today's guest is Father Larry Richards, author of Be a Man. And we're talking about the Sacrament of Reconciliation and more broadly talking about being a man of repentance. And I think, uh, Father, one of the uh, struggles people have is they say, well... I'm always confessing the same thing mm-hmm. over and over again. I, I don't seem to be making any progress. In, so why even bother going to reconciliation? Well, or, or maybe they do keep coming back, and they're just very frustrated. Sure. Well, one of two things. The first thing I always say, you know you're not forgiven unless you have a repentant heart, right? you got to repent of that. It isn't you go and say, okay, I'm going to try to do better. You never say once, I'm going to try not to do it again. Like, for instance, I come up to you and I beat the heck out of you, and I go, oh, I'm so sorry I beat the heck out of you. I'm really sorry. Do you forgive me? And you go, oh, yeah, I forgive you, Father. And I see you an hour later, and I beat the heck out of you again. I go, <laughs> Oh, I'm really sorry I beat the heck out of you. Uh, I'm really sorry. Will you forgive me? And you're a saint. You go, oh, yeah, I forgive you, Father. I see you an hour later. I beat the heck out of you again. And I go, I'm really, really, really sorry. And this time I'm going to try really hard not to beat the heck out of you again. What would you say? I don't think so, Father. Well, why? Because if I was sorry, I would stop beating the heck out of you. That's what's necessary for forgiveness. Repentance is necessary. So when you make an act of contrition, you say, I firmly resolve with the help of your grace to sin no more. You don't say, I firmly resolve to help your grace to try to sin no more. That's not what you say. And you can't lie in confession. So you've got to have the intention that I will repent of this sin. And I'm not going to do it anymore by your grace, Jesus. Now, in our weakness, we fall. But until we finally go to say, I go to confession to repent of sin, I don't just sit there. Now, in confession, you not only get forgiveness, but you'll get grace to be strong against that sin. And so sometimes people, like, like I just did for, for my parish here, I says, you know, people have struggled with the same sins their whole life. So what I want you to do is this year I want you to focus on one sin that you really want out of your life. And I said, you can give that to Jesus. Jesus, I give this sin to you. I want it out of my life forever. I can't do it myself, but you can do it, and you can help me. So because some people come and say, oh, yeah, Father, like I just talked about this last Sunday. And I says, so you come to confession, and the first question I always ask people is to pray every day. And some people, it's only been five days, and they say, oh, no, Father. I said, there's no reason that you don't pray every day. There's absolutely, positively no reason. So you got to have a repentant heart that, Lord, I'm going to... I'm going to pray every day for the rest of my life. And when you do that, then God gives you the grace. But if you just come into confession and there's nothing changing, you have no repentant heart, then even if the priest gives you absolution, it doesn't take. You need to have a repentant heart to have absolution take because God knows your heart. And I can't forgive something if the person's not repentant or if the person's not sorry. On the the other side of that, let's say I'm a person that, you know, we live in a fairly relativistic uh, society that says, you know what, That, that, that whole sin thing, it's very... Very uh, puritanical. It's old fashioned. I, sure. you know, I'm a good person. I try really hard. Sure. Do I really need to go to confession? Well, sure. And you really re- need to go to confession because it ain't puritanical. Our offenses offend the holy God. 
you know, and so it has nothing to do with, you know, that's what happens. So often people think it's about me and trying to be a moral person. No, no, no. It's about you trying to follow a holy God. And like, again, I just spoke at Focus in Chicago last week, 8,000 uh, college people. And I just said, you know, the whole, the whole thing was on virtue. And I said, gentlemen, I talked to the, all the, boy, the, the boys there. So I said, gentlemen, you have two choices. You become a saint or you go to hell. You understand? There is no in-between. The call for God is to be a saint. And so, you know, what happens with us, especially men, is we, ch- we challenge people. To- the reason men don't go to church anymore, I think, is because we've become wimpy in dealing with them. Oh, guys, just try harder. Oh, stop it. You know, you want a, a guy and he wants to become a man, what does he do? He goes to the Marines. And the first two weeks at uh, boot camp, they treat you really nice, don't they? Oh, guys, are you having a good day today? <laughs> I just got a letter from a guy in the Naval Academy, and he said... Basically, we eat, and then we clean our clothes. They yell at us, and then we <laughs> exactly. eat another meal, and then they yell at us again for no reason. And... <laughs> to make them men. And yes. then in the church, we, we wimp-toast them. <laughs> we got to be challenging men again to be holy, to be saints. And again, you won't do it by your own grace or by trying harder, but by the grace of God. So first of all, that got to be my goal. So I says, you know, gentlemen, your first goal is to go to heaven. And that means you're going to be a saint one day. And so in that, you're going to need the grace, but you're going to need a repentant heart. So, And the biggest difference between a saint and a sinner forever is the saint is one who got up one more time. So we need to go, but again, we always get the grace. Like we, every time we go to mass, in the beginning of mass, our venial sins are forgiven. Right? The priest gives absolution. Let's call to mind our sins. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. The catechism is clear. We're forgiven of venial sins at that time. You know now. To go to confession, we always need to confess mortal sins, and we need to go to confession at least once a month to kill our pride, because pride gets in the way. And so it isn't just, again, as I talked about earlier, you know, when people say, oh, Father, it's been a year, I haven't done much, I go, that's the problem. The greatest sins are the sins of, uh, 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 what do you call it, I just talked about it earlier, sins of omission. Mm -hmm. You know, according to Matthew 25, most people will go to hell because they failed to take care of the poor. They failed to reach out and love to others. They failed. You know, and people don't want to hear that. But you need to hear that because that's what Jesus, who gave us the final exam questions, this is what's going to happen on Judgment Day. So it's a constant growth. That's why we constantly got to grow. Father, you often talk about, speak about the Holy Spirit and the role of the Holy Spirit in convicting our hearts Mm -hmm. of the need to repentance. Can you talk a little bit about the Holy Spirit's role in all this? Absolutely. In my book, it's four, I have four chapters all dedicated to the Holy Spirit, because the Spirit of the living God, remember that's what came upon Jesus when he was baptized, and the Spirit led him into the desert. And for us to be men, we need to have our lives led by the Holy Spirit, because Jesus was the perfect man. And it's the Spirit who brings conviction to our hearts. Now, conviction is much different than condemnation. When condemnation is all about me, and oh, I didn't do bad. Uh, good, I'm no good, I'm no good, I'm no good. Conviction is, look at you've done this, but God, I want, God wants you to be better. And it convicts us because this is killing us, so we move on to the next level. So conviction comes from the Spirit of the living God, and it isn't about despair ever, it isn't about condemnation ever, it's about conviction. Okay, I got to do better by the grace of God, and the Spirit of the living God in my conscience will convict me of sin so I can move on and holiness. Hey, uh, Father Larry, we got a, uh, a short break coming up here in a little bit, and I wanted to ask you if there's anyone listening out there that's thinking about becoming a priest or, or considering what, do you have any advice for him real quick? Absolutely. You pray and you seek Jesus' will. There's no greater life than the priesthood. I love being a priest, and so will you. You pray about it and you say, Jesus, if you want me to be a priest, I'll be a priest, and he will lead you. Father Larry, thank you so much for joining us today. We really, really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It was a great time. Stick around after a short break, and Father Zach and I will be pitching a lot more of what Larry Richards, uh, Father Larry Richards talks about and uh, fill in a lot of the things we couldn't get to on this interview. My help comes from you. You're right here pulling me through. You carry my 
Welcome back to Man Up on Iowa Catholic Radio. I am Joe Stopulis along with Father Zach Kautsky. And uh, quite an honor to have Father Larry Richards on to talk about the, the sacrament of confession. Father Zach, uh, major takeaways from you? Anything you want to add to that conversation? Yeah, I think one of the things that we didn't get to today, but I know that Father Larry has talked about is just on the topic of sin. Uh, he talks about the idea that every sin has some kind of pleasure that's a part of it. Otherwise, you know, it wouldn't be... Something we want to do. There's got to be some kind of pleasure, some kind of lust attached to it, whether it's a lust for money, uh, for sex, for possessions, whatever kind of lust you're talking about. There is some kind of attraction there to that. And he also speaks about the fact that little by little sins will, uh, the enemy, the devil will try to make uh, us slaves, you know, to these sins. And so sin also enslaves us. And also, I think you know, many people experience this as they're coming to confession or thinking about it, is that when we commit sins, we start feeling just kind of uh, dirty. We feel dirty. Uh, we feel the wounds in our soul if we're, we're attentive to that, and we feel that guilt. You know? and, so, and then kind of lastly, sin separates us from God the Father. And so I think really, really important this topic that we take seriously the call of Jesus to be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect, uh, that we, we seek out this beautiful sacrament. And I know like, cause I hear confessions, but I also go to confession. I try to go every two weeks at least. Um, and it's so freeing, you know, to have that burden lifted off your shoulders, just from an experiential point of view, just to actually feel that burden come off your shoulders, but also then to, really have that challenge. And I think men need a challenge to have that challenge to, to move forward and be able to walk in the light. I think really, really now, one of the, powerful. one of the quotes that he had in his book that we didn't get to is actually two of them. He said, on the, I, I believe in the day we die that the God of love will give us what we love the most. And he's talking about the first commandment uh, about loving God above all others. So did you, did you pray today? Oh no, father, I didn't pray today. Well, did you eat food today? Okay. Then you love eating more than you love God. Did you pray today? No, I didn't, but I, uh, did you watch TV? Yes, of course I did. Well, then you love TV, then you love more than uh, you love God. Mm-hmm. And then he goes on and he says another great quote that I wrote this down at the conference was no Bible, no breakfast, no Bible, no bed. So you've got to, before you eat breakfast, eat Bible, you got to read the Bible. And before you go to bed, you've got to read the Bible. You've got to have the word of God in you at all times. Uh, I cannot uh, emphasize enough, encourage you enough to read the book, Be a Man, by Father Larry Richards, but then specifically listen to his talks. Uh, mm-hmm. Go to form.org, go to Lighthouse uh, Catholic Media. His confession talk is awesome, but really any of the talks you get from him um, are all, they're so well, they're so polished, they're so quick, they're pithy, and they're right to the point. I will listen to them over and over again because I'm always grabbing something new out of them. So, again, just Google search Father Larry Richards. Try to find YouTube talks. Go to form.org. Uh, get whatever you can and, and really dive into Father Larry Richards. If there's ever a guy uh, who speaks to men today in the country that you need to listen to, it's Father Larry. So, uh, for Father Zach Kautsky, I am Joe Stopulis. Thanks for joining us again today. It's time to man up. Man up. Inspiring men to live out their call to holiness with Joe Stopulis and Father Zach Kautsky. Heard Mondays at 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. on Iowa Catholic Radio. Brought to you by Construction Professionals.